In 2 Timothy chapter 3, it says, starting in verse 1, This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof, from such turn away, from such turn away. Only we're not listening. Not only are men not turning away, they're turning into it. Men are embracing self-love and pleasure. Sadly, you see more and more narcissism and self-love being amplified through today's so-called teachers and preachers and prophets right here in the church. It's not that men are unable to resist the self-love of a narcissistic generation, you know, with the help of Jesus. It's just that they don't want to resist. They're willfully ignorant to those prophetic verses that I just read. Now, this is a generation which truly does have a form of godliness, but that's about it. You see social media prophets and teachers who steer the masses and their congregations off of the path to Jesus Christ, and they steer them onto a highway of politics, prosperity, wealth, merch stores, and just an all-around me-centered false gospel, which uses Jesus merely as a footnote to these false gospels. Two thousand twenty two was a year of unmitigated prophetic disaster for these false prophets, but you'd never know that. This generation openly demonstrated their utter disdain for truth in Christ as they embraced, defended, and promoted some of the most horrendous, blaspheming, lying false prophets that this world has ever seen. These false prophets produced and continue to produce immeasurable catalogs of lying spewage which could easily fill the largest of libraries to overflowing. Their blasphemous lies which they commit against Jesus Christ are so over-the-top outrageous, so provably wrong, that it would even cause the 850 false prophets, you know, that Elijah battled at Mount Carmel, it would even cause them to blush with embarrassment for today's false prophets. We're in a time, however, where not all the blame falls entirely on the false prophets. In fact, I would say the vast majority, the vast majority of the blame falls on their followers. You see, it's the followers. They're out working daily to pour the gasoline onto this dumpster fire of false prophecies which come out of the mouths of these false prophets, and in essence, they set the world on fire with delusion. I mean, these followers who are in this frenzied delusion, well, they seek only after continuous pleasure-driven entertainment. It's all about entertainment. It's a daily quest to get their dopamine fix, to get that next thrill of tuning into their favorite false teacher in order to hear the next fantasy tale of what God is allegedly doing in America or in the world. And they believe these things which they know God did not speak. Now these fantasies are so powerful that they spiritually blind the listener to not only common sense, but to actual reality. Facts no longer matter. They're useless to them. Results, they don't matter. Feelings, that's where it's at. Feelings become the foundation of their confirmation. 
The Bible is merely a thought from a time long past. Truth in Christ is redefined as only what comes out of the mouth of the social media prophet in their next video. I think it's gotten so bad you really couldn't classify this as a runaway train. It's a runaway world. Jesus said we're approaching a time where he described like this in Matthew 24, 21. For then shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, no, nor ever shall be. Really, really bad times are coming this way. And right now we have a generation filled with hurting, broken people who desperately need, need to hear the truth the true gospel of Jesus Christ. They need to hear that more than ever before. And that true gospel has been hijacked by demented wolves who are slaughtering the fold. The glory has been taken from Jesus and placed upon these rock star false prophets and teachers. There's never been a generation of false teachers and false prophets who have displayed a greater lack of fear of our living God than this one. And there's never been a greater generation of their followers who have willingly abandoned their common sense and biblical doctrine than this one, while they embrace delusion and again they deny reality. How does God rescue a generation who has turned their back on him in lieu of babbling actors who make promises of health, wealth, and, well, Donald Trump? Back when kings and their generations, when they went off the path, God would send them real prophets to warn them and to bring them back to God. They killed those true prophets. They also embraced the false prophets back then because they also, they promised peace and health and wealth. The masses refused to see that, well, it's happening again. I would say on a much larger scale. Our Lord and Savior is warning this generation today, but they're refusing his counsel. Today, the masses, they say, well, speak to us smooth things. Bring us wealth. Bring us Donald Trump. Bring us the heads of these evil Democrats. This is God's will, they cry. Today's social media prophets are rock stars in every sense. They're adored. They're worshipped. Emulated. They are preferred. They play rock and roll in the churches. They bring in the fog machines and the lasers. They put on shows and they wear costumes. They tell their tales of fantastic miracles, which happened, you know, somewhere else where you're not. And of course, none of it's documented. None of it's on video. You just, you know, you just have to believe them. And guess what? The masses believe them. These prophets, they promise the moon, and they deliver nothing. And the masses don't care. They scream, more, more, tell us more lies. We love it, and we wouldn't have it any other way. So, the, the false prophets, they continue. They'll say something like, hey, it's a, it's a new year. And guess what? I'm going to prophesy to you the exact same thing I prophesied last year. I might make it sound a little different, but you're going to believe it and you're going to love it. And again, the masses, they do, they do love it. Anything but Jesus Christ and Him crucified. In 2 Peter chapter 2, Peter says in verse 1, but there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you who 
privily shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that bought them, and bring upon themselves swift destruction. And many shall follow their pernicious ways, by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of, and through covetousness shall they with fiend words make merchandise of you. I often wonder, do the masses really know that they're being made merchandise of? Do they care? Their prophets are showered with gifts and money and praises. They travel the country on the donations of their followers. They live a very privileged life because of their lies. They come on stage and the masses cheer. And no matter what comes out of their mouths, the crowd cheers. I'm not kidding. Anything the prophets say will gain applause. When others come forward to question them or to correct these so-called prophets, they're met with mobs of hateful people defending them. And the ones who are warning them biblically, well, they're cast out of the towns and stoned, metaphorically speaking. But I want to try to appeal to some who may be listening. Are you one who is following these teachers, these so-called prophets? Have you ever bothered to test them? Have you ever bothered to test the spirits as we're instructed to do in 1 John 4, 1? Does it not concern you when they're wrong? No? Well, do you know who is concerned when the prophets are wrong? God. God hates false prophecy. Why doesn't that bother you? Again, so many claim to love God and they just ignore what God says in His Holy Word. When is the last time you read your Bible? When is the last time you sat alone with the Lord in prayer and fellowship? You know, shut down the computer, turn off the tablet. Now, I know many will say, yeah, we have, we have. Then my next question would be, why don't you believe the Holy Word of God? For there is no possible way that anyone could name the name of Jesus in truth and sincerity and then go back and listen to these false prophets and adore them. Jesus said in John 14, 15, If you love me, you will keep my commandments. Ask yourself, what did God command when it came to false prophets and deceivers? You can read all about it in Deuteronomy chapter 18. Now there are those out there who absolutely know with no uncertainty that these alleged prophets have falsely prophesied, but they just ignore it. And then they ignore the words of Jesus. Why? Jesus also said in Matthew 15, 8, This people draweth nigh unto me with their mouth, and they honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. Do you know why he said this? Because it's true, and it happens in every generation. Everybody seems to honor Jesus with their mouth, but the heart is the key. The hearts of many are sold out to their social media prophets and Jesus becomes secondary. The masses cannot comprehend that there's no such thing as an accurate prophet. There's no such thing. True prophets never ever miss. It's a testimony to the perfection of God Almighty. would ask you this day to examine yourself. Where is your heart? Is it with man or is it truly with Jesus? On Judgment Day, the masses, the social media friends and the social media prophets will not 
help you before God. You and I will have to give an account to God all by ourselves. The abundant supply of social media dopamine and all the storytelling goosebumps, well, that's going to be all shut off. Did you stand in the truth of God's holy word? Or did you compromise your precious faith for the rock star prophets and the thrill of getting your itching ears tickled? I don't know what else I can say other than please come back to Jesus Christ. Recognize the delusion out there. Come back to the immeasurable depth of God's wisdom and His holiness. Come back to the precious gospel of Jesus Christ.